everyone, and welcome to another episode in our series, Foreshadowing in the Old Testament. Joining us here today again is Father Dawood Tawadros from the Church St. Anthony in Maitland, Florida. Thank you for joining us, Avuna. You're welcome. What story will we be discussing today? Well, it is uh, an event uh, that you will uh, find in Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9. It's one of the beautiful things that uh, probably needs uh, a lot of... Um, searching and understanding. I have not seen this in many of the books, uh, but I um, learned about it, um, f uh, learning, learning a little bit about uh, the Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting uh, um, story that we're going to talk about today. So in Ezekiel uh, chapter 9, uh, there was one of the um, prophecies that uh, God has told Ezekiel to tell the people of Israel because of their uh, sin and the being away from God. So uh, he prophesied about a time that uh, they will be destroyed because of their sins. There will be time that God would not tolerate for anyone to stay in sin and not um, looking for their own salvation at any time of their life. And, uh, and in spite of all the ways and all the trials that God tries to bring man back to him, if anyone would continue in rejecting God, there would be the time of destruction. So here in chapter 9 we can read, he say, um, Then he cried out in my ears with a loud voice saying, The punishment of the city is near. And each had instruments of destruction in his hand. Behold, six men were coming from the way of the high gate that looks toward the north, and each one's axe was in his hand. One man among them was clothed with a full length robe, with a belt of sapphire about his waist. They entered and stood near the bronze altar. Then the glory of the God of Israel went up from the cherubim, and the glory which was over them went into the inner court of the house. He called to the man clothed with the long robe, with the belt on his waist, and he said to him, Go through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over all the lawless deeds taking place within her. To the others, he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Let not your eyes spare and have no mercy. And let us just try to understand what happens here and then uh, we'll learn about where is the sign of the cross here. So here the people of Israel were completely far from God, not repenting, not coming back to God. So God, it is a time of destruction, who sent six men um, with the instrument of, instruments of destruction in their hands. But in the middle of them, there is a man clothed with a full-length robe with a belt of sapphire about his waist. This is a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ in his second coming, coming with his angels at the end of days to, um, to be able to punish those who uh, were not looking for their own salvation and, ad and rejecting him um, and, and also to reward those who believed in him and they lived their life away from sin struggling not to accept sin in their life. So here he told them, he told them, go before you do that, put a mark on their forehead. You know that the Old Testament were all written in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And the alphabet of the Hebrew language, it's about 22 letters, it starts with the first letter uh, was Aleph, which is the alpha, mm -hmm. uh, elephant Arabic too, and ends with uh, the letter Tav. Uh, those are the 22 letters of the Hebrew. And 
And the letters in its shape sometimes tells a story. In the past, all these letters are made as a shape, mm -hmm. not just a simple uh, writing uh, letters. And each shape has a meaning. Mm -hmm. So each letter has a meaning. Each letter in the Hebrew. And it's beautiful when you learn about these letters and you try to find out and when you look at the words written originally, the book, the Bible, when it's written originally in the Hebrew language, and you try to understand how these letters came together to make the words of the Holy Bible, you will be amazed at the meaning of the sentences that every sentence and every word, it points to Christ in an unbelievable way. Um, you probably can find a lot of this in, on the internet to, 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 to listen to and hear. But let's learn about this part. He, he asked the angel to go and mark the people who groan and, and, and cry about the low, over all the lawless deeds taking place within uh, the city of Israel, meaning that they don't like the way the people are living. They don't like the life of sin that they are living in it. So there are people who are crying every day. They are not happy of the way the Israelites are living their lives. Mm -hmm. But what is this mark? And I mean, I mean, to do this, I want you to look at this. This is a kind of the Hebrew uh, letters. And, and as you see the letters here on the very left column uh, uh, is the very ancient letters of the Hebrew. And as you see, these Hebrew letters had a shape in the beginning. Like if you look very closely to this, might be it's not easy to see. But the alpha or the aleph looks like the ox or the face of, the, uh, of an ox, which is, uh, is a sign of power. It begins in the beginning. But you see that the letters went through different stages. Very early, uh, these are the shapes of these letters and then took a different shape and then uh, developed to another shape. And this is how it is related to the Greek and also um, how it is re related to most of the letters that we have in different languages. And probably when the book of Ezekiel was written, was written on these alphabet, which is a very ancient one. You can search about it, it's got uh, uh, Paleo Hebrew. Um, and Mark, when you put a mark, with, as, as he said in chapter nine, you go around and put a mark on the forehead. Actually, the mark, the word, when you go to the Hebrew Bible, it says, put the letter Tav. And I'll, I'll, I'll bring this bigger one here. So Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew language or alphabet. And as I said, each letter has a meaning. So the word Tav has a meaning of a mark. So instead of write mark meaning four letters, it is just one letter, just put the letter Tav on their forehead. And this is all the people that they will not be under the law of destruction. And if you look carefully, the letter Tav in its very early shape, mm -hmm. It takes the shape of, cross. of the cross. Having that letter on their head, it will save them from being destroyed. Mm -hmm. So here God is asking Ezekiel to mark the people, the good ones, the people who um, would not like uh, the life of sin or being living in sin. So, I mean, if you, if you look at that, in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, if you go to the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter seven, and here it will be the same thing. The angel will visit the earth. And from verse three, he said, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So even the second, on the second coming, there will be a similar situation because people on earth would be 
groups of people who uh, would stay living in sin, uh, rejecting uh, the salvation of God, uh, re rejecting his only begotten son and his uh, redemption. Uh, and there are people who would struggle to stay in the fear of God. So he said that those people, you would seal the people, the servants of our God has to be sealed on their four heads. And uh, you, if you go to chapter 9, he would order him to destroy everything and everyone who does not have this seal on his forehead. And I wonder, and this is probably something that we don't know yet. So the Revelation is a book of foreshadowing the second coming. But as, as you see, all these stories in the Old Testament was foreshadowing the cross that we know now about it. But here the Revelation also foreshadowing what will happen in the second coming. So here I wonder what would be that mark or that seal that it will be put on the foreheads of the servant. And it will be no surprise if it is the sign of the cross too. It is the same sign that saved the people at that time in the prophecy of Ezekiel from destruction. Mm -hmm. And it will be also the sign that will save the people from death and destruction at the end of ages. Seems like it's a common theme in the, all the stories is the cross is saving. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Abuna, for joining us here today and showing this wonderful historical story, but that has a really important meaning behind it. Thank you. And thank you all for watching, and we hope you join us in our next episode in our series, Foreshadowing in the Old Testament.